This is Off Planet Radio. Hello again. This is Off Planet Radio. I'm Randy Moggins. It is 2020. Wow. It's 2020. Woohoo! We've been talking about this. Yeah, there's Chris Burroughs from c60evo.com. And um, also with us today is uh, a very good friend of mine, somebody that we've, we've gone deep before. Uh, say hello to Patty Greer. Yay, Patty! Hey! We're going to go a little kinder this time. Yeah, yeah, we pushed a few buttons. We pushed major buttons. <laughs> yeah. So we're here to talk about Carbon 60 ESS 60, um, which is an important distinction to make because this is the next evolution of C60 formulations. And uh, so I guess, you know, since the last time Chris and I talked, um, you, guys, you guys have launched and we're now seriously into the revolution. We had a pretty successful launch campaign, got a lot of good feedback. Um, some of the people in my listener pool have been longtime C60 users. So for them, this was just kind of like, oh yeah, it's time to reboot this thing yeah. and kick it up. And so um, Chris, uh, how are things going in, in, in C60 world? Well, Randy, thank you so much for having me back and great to be on air with Patty. Um, things are going really good. Yeah, we had our launch in November. It was a phenomenal month. October, excuse me, December continued that way. Uh, January is looking like that. That's, that's in part to, uh, to kind of your effort and helping us get the word out there. Uh, yet the evolution of C60 is, is really important, right? Because um, there's challenges that the industry, even so, though it's such a shame, even though it's such a young industry, there's challenges that this industry is experiencing. And, and we're, E60 is really like the next evolution to help people uh, mitigate those challenges. Yeah, so... Um, we did a fair amount of introduction of C60 to anybody that was um, new to this realm in the last show. So, we, you know, we point back to that. Will there be a link down there below? I can, I, you you want me to give a that? brief summary? I, some, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't always have to talk for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> but you can if you want to. I, th I think the, the kind of the long and short, uh, at least from my company's perspective, we've been manufacturing um, Buckyballs uh, ESS60 since 1991. Uh, they did a toxicity study. They assumed the material would be toxic. Uh, they did that study in uh, 2012. It's a peer-reviewed published study. Instead of being toxic, and then here's like the demarcation, the evolution of, of, of ESS60 or C60. C60 is for industrial applications, and if you don't process process it properly or actually process it improperly. It is known, peer-reviewed, published research to be harmful. ESS60 is C60 that's been processed for safer human consumption. Uh, so uh, in this toxicity study, they gave rats water, rats olive oil, and rats olive oil with ESS60 in it. Instead of being toxic, those rats that were given uh, the C60 Evo formulation actually lived 90% longer. Um, that's amazing. That's the single longest longevity experiment on mammals, peer-reviewed, published, uh, uh, ever. Uh, in fact, if anybody in your audience is aware of anything out there that's even close, send it to me because uh, I'd like to be abreast of you know the latest science. It's the longest longevity experiment ever, and not only did they live 90% longer, a typical Worcester rat gets a certain amount of uh, of tumors and the amount of tumors it gets is proportional to how long it lives. These rats lived twice as long as the regular rats and none of them had any tumors. Uh, so now people are taking it and now we're here talking about the evolution of it. So, uh, boy, there's a lot to unpack there. Where's <laughs> the, um, where's the toxicity factor? Let me just go. Uh, Cause again, there's always a fear of a product that people don't understand. Carbon itself is inherently neutral yep. to humans. 
So where did the toxicity factor come into the C60? Yeah, the reason they assumed that it was toxic, right? Because this was the scientific assumption. Um, when they discovered it, they actually discovered it back in 1985 at Rice University here in Houston. Uh, those scientists who discovered it won the Nobel Prize for that discovery in a very short 11 years. The reason they won the Nobel Prize is because, the sci again, you know, the scientific community recognized this as an amazing achievement. And why they thought it was an amazing achievement is they reckoned that, that the buckyball, which looks like a soccer ball, basically, is a 3D version of benzene, right? So this benzene is a six-sided carbon ring, um, and benzene actually has hydrogens on the outside. Benzene is ubiquitous in our society. Yeah all of your plastics, medicines, detergents, like we don't have modern society without benzene. And benzene is in fact toxic. It's a, to it's a known carcinogenic and it's toxic. So they assumed this would be a 3D version of benzene, you know, scientists being what they are, then we have to assume that it's gonna be toxic. And that's why they did uh, that toxicity study that turned out to be the longest longevity experiment ever done. So from, let's move from toxicity over to efficacy, because you brought up something interesting there. You talked about the oil that the C60 was suspended in, specifically olive oil. And we've seen um, in the marketplace for um, the last, I'm thinking back, my article on this goes back to 2013. So we've largely seen the industry using any number of oils, including sunflower oil, coconut oil, um, and then of course olive oil and some others as well. Um, but there's some interesting information that's come out. Patty reminded me of this as well, yes. that the coconut, or, or I'm sorry, that the olive oil itself actually holds, and correct me if I turn this wrong, actually holds more of the C60 in its... Yes. It, it, as a suspension. Finish my so I, sentence. In a solution. <laughs> I'll, I'll put it that way. In, in yeah, solution. Yeah. solution. So, so what, I mean, the, the, the right way to say it is, yeah, you get more, uh, you can dissolve more of the ESS-60 in olive oil than you can in any of the other oils. First thing, sunflower oil, like, is pretty clear. It's not good for you. Uh, there's only one person that I'm aware of that's selling sunflower oil, and it doesn't even have any C60 in it. So I think that's pretty important to note. Um, be very leery if it's in sunflower seed oil. Um, then you look at olive oil, it can hold about 0.8 milligrams per milliliter. And then the one that, that I think you might be referring to, uh, uh, there, a number of companies have really built their company base on purple MCT oil, right? right and right. the reality is, is MCT oil can only hold less than half. So 0.35, again, olive oil is 0.8, MCT oil is 0.35, can only hold 0.35, less than half of the ESS-60 uh, that you can get into olive oil. So MCT uh, is a significantly weaker product, like less than half. And I think there's companies out there, again, kind of based their whole industry on purple and MCT, and they really haven't been forthcoming with their customers that that product is significantly inferior uh, to olive oil. So we do offer MCT. There's some people who maybe don't like olive oil, and you can get the MCT version, um, but it's well labeled, and I come on to podcasts and share with our a customer base that, yeah, in fact, it's a weaker product. Know that you need to take more than double the dose in order to get the same equivalent dose of ESS-60. So how do we, how do we assess the, um, the quantity of C60 inside of, uh, of the solution? I'm trying, I, I don't know the exact scientific term, so I'm being kind of loose here, but density of C60 within the solution itself, how, how do we test that? How do we know? Yeah, so it, it's solubility, and really, um, you look at the packaging, um, and, and, and so the packaging is actually accurate. It's what the messaging that is being put out in, uh, in, in kind of through the PR of the company. So if you look at, say, our packaging, right? You've got, it labels 0.8 milligrams per milliliter. Sometimes companies will use 80 milligrams um, in 10 milliliters, right? So that's just a, you know, a multiple of 10. But it's 0.8 milligrams per milliliter. 
And then in the MCT, it's 0.35 milligrams per milliliter. Uh, and then avocado is actually better than MCT. It's about 0.6, but not as good as olive oil. It's about 0.65 milligrams per milliliter. Um, there isn't really a good way for the average consumer to test this. That's just, there's no good way. Um, because it's in solution, it's just kind of like having sugar water. You can filter it. What you would really need to do is kind of boil off all, you know, all of the olive oil. This is if you were at home, boil off all the olive oil, you're going to have some residual, like it's, it's not a doable thing from home. Um, here at our lab, of course, we've been manufacturing and selling uh, C60 and now ESS60 really since 1991. Uh, we, and, and here's what's different about our pedigree. We've been selling to research institutions and those research institutions that we sell our product to have the knowledge and the equipment to actually test our products. So it's the most difficult market to sell materials into, and we've been doing it since 1991. Now, one of the challenges that the consumer has is there's all these other companies, they don't have the pedigree we have, they don't have their own testing equipment, and so they're relying on their own vendors uh, and their own processes, and, and are they doing the right amount of testing in order to make sure that they've got the right satur saturation, um, a complete saturation of about 0.8. The other thing that's interesting, the standard way that you test concentration of C60. So, so fullerenes is a whole gamut of molecules and you've got C60, C70, C76, C84. All of these are, you know, cages, roundish cages. And you, you need to separate those materials and then quantify how much you've separated those materials. So in order to get a really ultra pure 99.99% uh, C60, which is what we use to make our ESS60, uh, you've got to have the equipment not only to separate it, right, and concentrate it, but then also test it. The standard testing process, and this is an HPLC high performance liquid chromatography, I'm getting really techy and I'll stop, I'll promise here. Um, <laughs> high performance liquid chromatography, you use that equipment and you can understand the differences in concentrations by looking at it at a specific wavelength. The challenge is when you do that with oil, everything changes because the C60, the ESS60 starts interacting with different polyphenols inside of the oils. And now you're actually, the, the, the wavelength that you would normally use is not necessarily the right wavelength. So you actually have to do uh, really a 3D HPLC scan of this to understand your concentrations. Most scientists don't even know that that's true. That's actually like, this is the first time I've ever really talked about that. Hey, you science nerds out there will be edified by this and the rest <laughs> of you. Uh, don't let your eyes glaze over because that was just to give us kind of the, the, the technical background. My so apologies. <laughs> well, that's what I love about Chris compared to the other labs that I had seen in the past was the HPLC machine is there and I watched it in action. So I'm just an experiencer. I am not scientific at all, um, but from everything I've seen, and I've been looking at C60 daily for two and a half years, using it regularly. Um, when I saw their lab, it was completely over the top because everything is done uh, basically at the highest level possible. So you don't have oxidation. You don't have air getting in your mixing units. You have everything tightly closed and the room is dark and the temperature is consistent as compared to, um, you know, once Chris and Robert send out their raw C60 to all these other mixers, they're not even manufacturers, even though it's put out that they are, they're just mixing. And between the SES leaving his lab and going into bottles to sell to people, we don't know how clean the lab is, if they're sonicating, if they're using other products to mix down. I mean, we just don't know. So when Chris came out with the ESS60, I was like, yes! It was a no-brainer because I take it, and uh, if I had pets, I'd be putting it in my pets. I have a mother, I give it to her. I've got family, I give it to them. And um, I am a complete, uh, I'm sold on the ESS60 being exceptional compared to any other C60 that I had done in the past, and probably you too. You've done uh, even the black C60, Randy. Um, the, yeah, I've been, using, I've been using C60 since 2014. 
And I began using it on the recommendation of, uh, of an associate of mine who I've worked with for years. I was using it at the time to mitigate the effects of medical poisoning. So I have to say at this point that I've used several different brands of C60. I'm fairly early in on the ESS60, so I'm not saying too much about it except to say that I've doubled down my dosage over the last two weeks, largely because I had a very serious sinus infection and bronchial infection that set in over Thanksgiving. Uh, I was mostly ill over the entire holiday period. So um, I doubled down the C60 and basically started to, to beat this thing down. So I'm actually feeling a lot better right now. I'm starting to notice uh, more energy, more resilience, better attitude. Um, and I suspect a lot of that is simply the antioxidant effect that's going on, as well as the fact that the C60 itself is helping to purge a lot of the things that I've, I've been in my body since that, that uh, medical poisoning back in 2013. I, I might even argue that it's also because now you're taking ESS-60 ES instead of just C60, right? That difference, I believe, is valuable. So we, yeah, I kind of come at this from the experiencer side. Um, in the time that I've looked at the marketplace, I do notice that there's a tremendous amount of testimonial coming from people of some very interesting groups, and maybe Chris or Patty, you can comment on this. Um, one of the groups that's most interesting to me is people that are doing um, athletics. Um, we, we saw a lot of testimonials from people who were engaged in competition, and also from people in what you would call the geriatric group, people over 50, people who are attempting to mitigate and offset the effects of the long-term effects of aging. So those are the groups of people that we looked at, but in the, in the middle of all of that, I see tremendous potential coming into this because of what we talk about on this show a lot is this, People who are watching the show know that I've been talking about what I call the eye of the needle, the 2020 effect, and the fact that we are going into the next stage of human evolution, that um, what 2020 to me earmarked, and I've, I've done a series of shows about this, is in fact an advancement not just of human consciousness, but our biology itself is beginning to elevate along with that, along with the stressors that are coming from this. Um, people have talked about ascension sickness, and it's kind of a cliche, and it's kind of not. There's something about our bodies as we begin to shift energetically that begins to put an immense amount of strain on the biology. So where I see the market now is with this advanced formula, this evolution, the ability to step in and begin to boost the body, and at the same time, aid what I believe is the ongoing um, shifts and changes even at the DNA level. Or what we're being hit with with Wi-Fi and potentially 5G. Yeah. 5G. I mean, we are challenged constantly. Um, the food supply has been completely deranged and we have to bring balance into our own bodies by being exceptional with what we put in. And that's why I am delighted with the ESS-60 because we looked at, you know, we were at 99.95% or we were at 95% of C60 when I first started taking it. And then it bumped up to 99.5 and then it went up to 99.9. But what Chris and uh, C60 Evo and I are doing now is 100% pure ESS-60. There's not varieties of different layers or levels of quality. It's pure ESS-60, which, again, it's really nice when you don't have to question what you're doing with your own personal system. So what, Chris, makes, what makes it so safe for human consumption that you can actually say that? 
Well, I mean, it really boils down to post-processing. So I mentioned like there's a separation process in order to isolate pure C60 <clears throat> from its other from the other fullerenes, C70, C76, C84. Uh, that process does require solvents. That's an, it's an important process. There's no other way to separate those. There's a physical process, but you actually lose about 50% of, uh, um, of the material. So if anybody's out there saying it's called sublimation, anyone out there who's using sublimation, their pricing should be about double uh, because, and if it's not, then I'm not sure that they're using sublimated materials uh, because you literally in that process lose about 50% of your material. So it's a very expensive way to do it. Uh, with our process and really like how we turn it into ESS60, it's a, it's a proprietary vacuum oven baking process that ends in a wash that gets as much as the solvents out as you can. So we've had it tested and our testing is about 10,000 times lower the amount of residual solvents than the EPA accepts in water. So I think that's worth repeating again the APA has a standard that is acceptable in water. Our product is 10,000 times lower than that standard. So now it's, it's you know, in, in real science, you, that's why even C60 is sold at 99.9. .9. You can never get it to 100% um, with this uh, getting the toxic, uh, getting the solvents out. It, you've, you're all, there will be residual, but again, we're talking about 10,000 times lower than the standard that the EPA has set for drinking water. So basically parts per million, very low. It's parts, parts per, more like parts per billion. Per billion. Yeah. Okay. Oh. okay. That's what I want. <laughs> yeah. No, I, and, and frankly, you probably get more solvents, toxic solvents into your system, pumping gas just by breathing while you pump gas yeah. uh, than you would by drinking 10 gallons of our product or hundreds of gallons of our product. So there are, there are stories out there on the internet, obviously designed to sort of deflect from legitimate product products. And there are people out there that are claiming that they're grinding up shungite, things like that, to create what they call a C60. Um, we probably shouldn't waste too much time on it, but maybe you could make that distinction. Well, so the original research, so again, the, the discoverers of uh, C60 originally, Dr. Smalley, Dr. Croto, Dr. Curl, um, they all did the discovery with a piece of equipment here in Houston at Rice University. Uh, they actually, as soon as they discovered the material, were like, well, let's scour the earth and figure out where we can find it. And they didn't find it in Shungite. And there's another uh, kind of uh, uh, carbon ooze called Shilajet. They didn't find it in those. Now, we've done some of our own testing actually pretty recently because we're still on the hunt for like, where can we find this naturally occurring? And there are parts per million in Shungite. So it may have been that the, that original group found it. It just wasn't an appreciable amount. And they're like, no, there's nothing there. We got to, we got to manufacture it. Uh, so Shungite will have a little bit of C60 again, parts per million. Um, the, the challenge that you have there is most people are taking the Shungite and they're sticking it even, even if that were enough, right? And we don't believe that's enough. We're, we're giving, as an example, one drop of our C60 Evo product actually has 400 times more molecules of ESS60 than you have cells in your body. That's, that's one drop, right? So if you've got parts, and it's got you know, way more than parts per million, if you've got parts per million in this ground up shilajit, and most people actually just stick it in water, C60 is not water soluble, so you're not getting this into your system. Even if you stick it in oil, it's such a minute quantity, it, 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 it would render it ineffective. So C60 is not soluble in water. So what is the vector for bioavailability via the oil? Can you tell us, tell us a little bit about how that works? Well, so what we do, like you can actually take the powder. So we could sell you ESS60 powder. You could take the powder. The challenge is in that powder, which is crystalline, kind of like sugar, it's crystalline form. It really is just going to pass through your body. Mm -hmm. When you dissolve it in the oils, you actually, when things go into solution, so like when sugar goes into solution in water, it actually goes on a molecule by molecule basis, right? The same thing happens with ESS60 in oil. And so you end up with individual molecules of oil dissolved and associated. So they're not bonded, but associated with different molecules inside the oil. 
what that is is you're ingesting something that has individual molecules which are significantly more bioavailable. I would argue that they are bioavailable where the crystals and in water, if you were ever to even get it suspended, are not bioavailable. So on a particular level then, relative to availability on a cellular level, what are we looking at, Chris? So, so, so relative to, um, I, I, I kind of rephrase that to give me a little okay. more perspective so, to go off of. So we, we've suspended it, we've, we've ingested it into the body. We, want, we believe this works at, at a very cellular level in terms yes. of nanoparticulate, is that correct? Yes. So, so when you ingest it, it, it will go through your stomach and get to your intestines. That's where your body tends to absorb lipids, right? The oil. Um, and then once it gets into your system, uh, we're aware that it participates intracellularly with the mitochondria, right? So the mitochondria is the engine Got house it. of each cell. It's in every cell. Yes. Uh, and, and so we know that it's participating. We don't know the exact uh, mechanism whereby it extended the life of these rats, whereby we're getting these amazing, amazing testimonials where your experience, like I can't explain to you on the actual individual chemical equation level why you're having the good experiences that you're having. Um, but, but we do know that it participates in mitochondria. Mitochondrial uh, function is just paramount to every, like to our existence. Okay. Thanks for that. I was, you gave me exactly what I was looking for. Um, because a lot of what I do is I try to address questions that I anticipate come from a casual viewer who's hearing this. And, and, and one thing that I, I, I could add to that, right? People are always like, so these rats live 90% longer. They were given your product. Actually, your name, your business name is mentioned in that original research. We're very proud of that. What is that mechanism? And, and really my standard an answer, I mean, of course, we just recently talked about the mitochondria participating in those actions in the ATP processes. Um, but really, current medical beliefs about aging are that it's an oxidation process and it's an inflammation process. Yes. And so, so the C60 EVO formulation is a known antioxidant and, and in fact, uh, one study showed that it's 172 times more powerful than vitamin C, and we can have a debate about how important that is, but it is a known antioxidant and it's a known anti-inflammatory. So it's not surprising that this material that extended the lives of these rats by 90% is actually an antioxidant and an anti-inflammatory. So what you just gave us there was, in fact, the mechanism by which C60, ESS60 is interacting on a mitochondrial level, which means it is a vector into the DNA itself. Is that a fair summation? Yeah, I think um, as soon as you start talking, and this makes me, I'll be honest, this makes me very nervous, and I'll tell, okay. tell you why. Not what you said, but like, as soon as we start talking about DNA and, and C60 or ESS60, there are people out there who are saying, hey, uh, C60 extends your, uh, your, your I, telomeres on your DNA. I've actually yeah, had conversations with some of these people who are out there saying that and going, oh, wow, that's, a, that's really exciting. Can you send me over the paper where that's shown to be true? And I don't even like, just show it to me. There's, you know, in vitro and in vivo. So in a Petri dish and in a human. I don't even care if it's in a human. Just show me that in a Petri dish, um, it shows the extension of telomeres. And the reality is, is that research doesn't exist. I think it's a, a scientific disservice to run around claiming it. Is it possible? Maybe it's possible. But I think people are out there saying, hey, it's repairing your DNA. Uh, you should take it, which I think is just, just wrong. Thank you. Uh, we yeah. have to be really careful about our claims. And I think one of the more interesting thoughts that I have whenever I think about the 2012 rat study called the Paris Bati, B-A-A-T-I study, you can uh, tap the link on our website c60evo.com, but Chris and Robert are already making preparations to redo that test. And the most exciting thing to me was that they proved that the rats live 90% longer that were fed the C60. And the test went on so long that the scientists were no longer being paid. And they ended the test and they kind of had to put the rats down because- Euthanize, yeah. It went on too long. Now, Chris and Robert are not going to end the lives um, 
I'd like to say put them out to pasture. I don't want to know, but um, <laughs> it would appear that if possibly they weren't put down, what if they live 300 times longer? This is what excites me is how good is C60 really for the lifetime of mammals and people? And we don't know yet. Um, yeah. I'm definitely so any. We just we just paid the 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 first invoice that that hurt a little uh, to get this process started. And something that's pretty exciting uh, is in that original study, <clears throat> a typical Wister, Wister rat lives 32 months. None of the rats in the study got any doses until the 10th month. And then they only got doses until the 17th month. So only seven months of their lives, less than one third of a typical Wister rat's life, did they get any dosage. And even though it was only for such a small time frame, the ones given the, the C60 Evo formulation lived, nine, excuse me, 90% longer with no tumors. So you can imagine when we recreate this study, we're not gonna be stopping uh, dosing at 17 months. Uh, there was actually a very scientific reason that they did that. The rats were, were what's called gavage, so they did need to put a tube in them to make sure that they were taking the correct dosage. What we know now is rats will actually eat C60 Evo. It's why we have a pet product for cats and dogs because they actually love the product. Um, so when we do this study, we won't have to gavage the rats. We'll actually be able to control the dosing through the food that they're given, which we know they will consume. So our plan is actually to just continue to feed them ESS60, uh, our product, for the duration of the experiment. So. Um, I might be, I might have committed already in, you know, January of 2020 uh, to 10 years of, of of paying for rats to be uh, uh, farmed. Uh, they, they, they call it, I forget what they call it, um, but for rats to be taken care of in, in a lab somewhere. Long-term geriatric care for rats. Yeah. <laughs> the Methuselah rats. There you go. Well, That's what's interesting. interesting in that original study, right, these rats lived twice as long, almost twice as long as the control group, but there's no notes in the study that these little rats had little walkers or, you know, they needed eyeglasses <laughs> or, or anything, right? They were, they lived a healthy life until they passed. And the C60 rats had no tumors tumors that yeah boggles my mind i mean that's what we all want now in this world we live in so yeah i um i had my health compromised eight months ago and so i've had everything tested and the most stunning thing to me <coughs> was that i had a heart scan and a carotid scan which is ultrasound and i'm hoping oh god don't give me any bad news and they sent me the report and I had a friend over that was a nurse and she said, I've never seen 0% plaque. I have no plaque. Now I've been really drinking C60 from SES for all my years. It came in different forms, but I was sold on the coconut oil. So I was getting almost a third of what I'm taking now with the ESS60 and olive oil. And uh, I was sold on it. I did really well and had I known to take olive oil, it would have been nice, but um, I don't know if we're the only ones talking about the percentages of um, milligrams per milliliters, but it's really important. If you're gonna take it for medical healing, you wanna take the stuff that's the strongest. I don't love the taste of olive oil, but I love how I feel when I take it. And, so and if you don't like the taste of olive oil, you can like take it with bread. You can take it you know, like soaked in the bread. Like it's not a thing like, you know, a, a discreet thing that you have to take separately. And then, and the other nice thing is even with a drink of water, tasteless water, the flavor that you may not like goes away immediately. So it's, it's really, really an easy product to taste. And you, you talked about, okay, MCT has a lower, lower concentration. I was just looking on Amazon the other day. There's a, <clears throat> there's a group that's selling uh, uh, C60 and olive oil in tablets. I think it's even gel caps. And I did a calculation in order to get a proper dose. By the way, I did the calculation on how to translate the dosage from the rats to humans. In order to get a, a proper dose, you have to take like 20 tablets a day of just this one product. And they're saying, oh, just take two in the morning, two in the afternoon. And it really frustrates me because there are gonna be some people out there who hear about ESS60 or hear about C60, uh, and they're gonna go and buy these tablets, and they're gonna take four tablets a day. They're gonna have one-tenth of a dose, and 
uh, and they're not going to have any experience. So they're going to run around and tell their friends that that C60 doesn't work and they haven't even tried the proper dosing, which is very, it's very frustrating for me to see things like this. Well, I don't mind the taste on any of the three oils that we sell at uh, C60 Evo. But in the beginning, you had another product that had a really Greek power olive oil. And I was a wuss. But on the other hand, knowing it's 0.8%, so what? But I always take it on a spoon. Uh, I started with a teaspoon, then I went to a tablespoon, and lately I just basically find a shovel. And, <laughs> do you, you, know, do you have yours? I've actually got mine right here. Um, I, I'm, I'm due. I'll take another dose this, this evening. I'm going to pop that. Well, that's a little yeah. more than five, but. I've already done two. You have to be um, really careful with this stuff. The gra specific gravity on this is not your standard olive oil either, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Anybody else has noticed this or not, but uh, I accidentally spilled some and it's like liquid ball bearings. Yeah. And I'm familiar with, I cook with, with olive oil. This is far more viscous than standard olive oil by virtue of the presence of these buckyballs in it. And I, I don't think I'm imagining that. I'm pretty familiar with olive oil. Yeah. But, uh, it's quite an amazing substance when you start to interact with it. Well, I have never wasted a drip. And if I ever- <laughs> no, I was off, licking it off the counter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I rub it on Me my too. face. I rub it on my hands. And I tell everybody, if you spill a drip, use it because it's really good for the skin. And I've actually been kind of um, going out of my way to rub olive oil, C60 Evo, on my face lately, and I, I I have this little you know little mirror that's magnifying, and I go and you know. Well, Patty, given face. given your recent um, interaction with let's say some very toxic substances, you look fantastic. You've got a glow. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Well, my glow had more brown spots last week, and I'm looking in this little mirror, and I'm seeing oh God, I'm still peeling. And I take tweezers, and I kind of peel off. And now I'm seeing that it's the brown spots. And I, you know, went to a salon and I had some laser and then it just came back. So now I'm like, all right, that's it. I want to spill. <laughs> so then I just turn it over in my hand and rub it on my face. But literally my brown spots are peeling off in the last few days. I've really noticed it. But um, you're referring to... Um, yeah. You had a bad poisoning. I had a bad poisoning. Yeah. And um, I, I, I don't know what it is. Yes, I do. <laughs> In my personality. I'm a documentarian and I miss nothing. I'm also very intuitive. So I listen carefully because I don't want to miss things. And going through school, I didn't read books, but I didn't miss anything the teacher said or the you know, the way that they were trying to get the story out for me. I remember the feeling and the words, not the books. And so I'm still that way uh, in, in my life. So my intuition scares people that aren't honest. And my documentary nature, I document everything. And now that we've got these iPhones, everybody's dangerous because any criminal behavior, you're going to have four people with a phone, a smartphone, dumb phone, whatever, nearby that hit play and are going to video what's going on. So we're really not as free to um, have criminals get away with things as we used to. But then trying to get the legal system to honor um, is, you know, like out of our control. But for me, I... Um, I don't have the tendency to lie and I don't, I, you can't pay me to lie. So I've never kind of been in the in club of people that are running a script or whatever. I got myself in trouble by making these great films and telling a lot of truth. And um, in the last year, I did another project where I was documenting, working really hard. And all of a sudden the, it was like a tree that was filled with termites all of a sudden everything was crumbling on the inside and I knew that I needed to make a change. I can't change others, but I can certainly move my body somewhere else. So I announced to someone I was living with and doing uh, other things with that I was going to be moving out and regaining my life. So I left for a week and when I came back to my home, this person had temporarily moved their stuff out, but left me very strange things that made me incredibly sick. 
And the one that I photographed and documented was carnitite uranium. It was in a bottle at my garage door and I wasn't looking for anything, but I was getting really sick and I was losing a lot of weight and I was sweating terribly. And all of a sudden I could hardly pack. So I had a friend come up and she kept holding my feet. You're losing it, you know, and she saw that I was in very rough condition and I just kept taking C60, but I wasn't functioning very well. So when I got out of the house, um, the movers helped me recognize that there was that bottle of carnitite uranium right there at the garage door to the kitchen. And I had picked it up once and said, what the hey, you know, and I knew that it had been placed there not with good intention. So I got so sick that when I moved to this beautiful place where I live now, I had to get everything tested and blood, hair, urine, breath. Um, saliva, every single thing. And the carnitite uranium, the three minerals that make it up, were all peaking on my test. So it was too obvious. It was too blatant. Strontium, I couldn't find the strontium. I don't know where that was hidden or put or who knows what. But there it was peaking in my system. So I've been detoxing, but really powering up on the C60. And I feel like it is such an advantage to have this because I'm not unstoppable, but I'm definitely goable. Go, like I keep going. I'm like the ever ready bunny that no matter what gets thrown at me, and this was a heap. Um, I was in an ambulance. I was rushed to the emergency room once I got to the place I live. It took about a month to really, and you know, I've been through it. And um, I'm doing all kinds of stuff, you know, to heal. But again, there's a line in the kitchen of detox products, but nothing comes before C60. And I swear that no matter what I was put through, if I wasn't taking C60, I don't think I'd be here. And I also was in a previous thing a few years ago where most people died in a situation that I was also kind of affected by and I didn't. And I'm thinking, damn, this stuff's good. So I am putting a bubble around my past about these incidents coming into my world because I don't need this anymore. I've got much better things to do with my life than deal with people that need to treat others that way. And um, I'm just so grateful that I take C60, uh, the ESS60 formulation because I feel badass. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> You've been through a lot. I have. So we, uh, we've covered a little bit of ground here on how to mitigate certain things such as being medically, chemically poisoned, radioactive poisoning. Mm -hmm. um, I guess if we look at this from a holistic standpoint, this is really about bringing balance into our biology of offsetting the effects that are quite frankly unnatural in some regards because of our hostile environment of advanced aging, the fact that we're seeing um, increasingly uh, the effects of EMF radiation around us, um, the carcinogens and toxic chemicals that are in our environment and our foods, processed food. Chris, can you talk a little bit about how C60 can help us build resilience in the body? Um, yeah, I, I think I can. You know, we're, we're still in the early stages, and so a lot of, you know, what Sure, we're I not can... asking you to make unsubstantiated claims, no. Yeah, uh, so, so and, and, and I'll talk about claims here, so it's always important when we go down this claims, uh, it, really not claims, I'm going to share with you what testimonials we've received from customers. Um, I don't, I'm not really in the position to claim that these will be even reactions that you'll have. Uh, the FDA hasn't evaluated our product. It's not intended to treat, diagnose, cure, or prevent any disease. Um, one of the things, if you want to talk about building resilience, I think we all understand that, that sleep is paramount uh, to our resilience, right? Our ability yes. to recover is founded and grounded and based in any word that you can use in, in sleep. And one of our most consistent testimonials uh, is better sleep. Um, and it comes in a couple forms. I'm very much about, I like binary examples more than, um, than kind of 
uh, stories, right? So I don't want like, oh, I feel like I sleep better. I want like, I've got a business coach who says for 50 years, he needed an alarm clock to wake up. And since uh, he's been on the product and the C60 Evo formulation, uh, he's been waking up before the alarm clock. For me, that's very binary, right? Like, I don't doubt that he needed the alarm clock, and I don't doubt that he's now waking up before the alarm clock. And he's told me, actually, he's gone on and off the product, and when he goes off with the product, uh, he starts needing the alarm clock. So so for me, that, that's very binary. I've got um, um, some people that I work with who said they couldn't get to sleep until 1 o'clock. They never really tried. Since they were on the product, product they were going to sleep at 10 o'clock. Um, I'm actually, I've, this is an aura ring. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the aura ring, uh, but the yeah. aura ring is supposed to be one of the better sleep trackers on the market. And I'm currently working with a scientist at aura ring, uh, cause aura ring of course has lots of people who have never taken our product who have sleep data and we want to send them bottles of our product and get sleep data pre and post. One of the things I can share with you, which is kind of interesting interesting, certainly anecdotal. Uh, the gentleman that I'm in contact with, his name's Benjamin. He sent me some data. The subject came up and he sent me some data and he was like, here's data of me uh, after I've had two or more drinks, right? Here's what my sleep profile looks like. And here's data when I haven't had drinks. The interesting thing was the profile when he has drinks, and this is specifically looking at resting, resting heart rate, has this decline in the beginning of the evening and then flattens out. Whereas if he hadn't had drinks, it's flat all the time. So I haven't gone off the product to get data yet. I'm going to do that at the end of this month because this is a very busy month. I actually don't want to. I'm, I know the scientific reasoning is, <laughs> is uh, uh, um, uh, uh, you should applaud it, uh, but I'm pushing it off. You're your own I, more skinny pig, basically. I need my own product. I have exactly. a busy month. <laughs> yeah. um, so probably in February, I'll go off for 10 days and we'll look at that data. But what I can say is I do have data of when I drink and when I don't drink, right? We just came out of New Year's and I don't have that, that decay. I don't have that decline in heart rate that takes one, two, maybe three hours minus flat all the way across as if I had not had any drinks. We do get people reporting that they can handle hangovers, that, they, that it gives them that ability to, 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 I'm not suggesting that you take our product and then go out and drink a lot. That's not what I'm saying. But if you're going to go out and have a few drinks, we have customers telling us yeah. that, that it helps them in the morning. I think I heard you call it the hangover helper one day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm glad you brought up the sleep thing again, because it is, we live in a sleep deprived culture and that's statistically true. Um, again, going back to it, a lot of it is the frequencies that we're being exposed to, which are creating very erratic sleep patterns. And when you, when you brought that up, I had not correlated this. But as I said at the beginning of the program, I've doubled down on my intake of the ESS 60 over the last 14 days. And I have to say, I've noticed, A, my sleep is deeper. It's easier for me to get into that sleep state. I'm, I'm a dreamer. I mean, my sleep is absolutely critical to me because my dream time is where I do my research. And I have noticed over the last five days, I'm waking up before an alarm. And I'm, w I'm waking up in a pattern, a sleep pattern that seems natural to me. Like not everybody needs eight hours of sleep, it varies. Yes. And at different stages in our lives, we need cycles. My sleep cycles are what I look at. And I've noticed that my sleep cycles have shifted in a very harmonious way over the last 14 days. So. That's the testimony so, you'll get out of me this time. And so here's, here's what's amazing about that testimonial. And so apropos, uh, there are so many times that I've met, like I've given a bottle to somebody and I'll be honest in the early part of 2018, when we were really kind of selling uh, this earnestly, I, I would give a bottle and I'd be nervous. Like, I don't know if they're going to get a result. Uh, you know, I, I, I was a skeptical about the product. I still am. Um, but I just have a lot more experience with powerful testimonials. So I give them a bottle and then I, and I have a conversation with them. And one of them is examples as a lady who worked in the office next to ours. And I'm like, Hey, so how has your experience been? And she looked at me, you know, a little sad. And she goes, well, you know, I haven't really noticed anything. And I said to her, well, how's your sleep? 
and her eyes just got like giant. She goes, you know, I've been posting on Facebook that I'm waking up at 5.30 in the morning, which is, she was former military. That was the mm -hmm. time that mm -hmm. she wants to get up. Yep. In my own example, I was just in LA recently. And so my, my wife and I flow out, fly out there. It's a two hour time difference. The first night I woke up at 6.20, no alarm clock. That's the time I wake up in Houston. Mm -hmm. But it's two hours you've different. Adjusted. So your your cycle basically resynced to West Coast time. Yeah. Or I think it's even and you like given like how you're in tune with your dreams, I think that my mind was more aware yeah. of what was going on and like knew when I went to sleep. Because I don't think it adjusted to the lights, right? Because I my wife and I stayed out late. We went went out and had dinner and went dancing. Um, I don't think my light, you know, I adjusted to the circadian rhythm of California. I think my brain was just aware, okay, here's what time it is. And you need to wake up at this time. Because um, I know that I've met people throughout my life who are like, I don't use an alarm clock. I just tell my brain I'm waking up at five and I do. And I, and I do think that's possible. I think that's what happened. And so um, it's, it's doing some pretty interesting and powerful things. So I, I do uh, believe that it helps with jet lag, right? So that's pretty important. I do believe it helps with hangovers. Um, and there's people in my office who will attest to that. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, and, and it's like sleep in general is really just better. I don't know if you've noticed this, Randy, there are times when I would go to sleep and my mind is just racing. I got three things I'm juggling yeah, and, yep. and I'm thinking maybe I shouldn't even bother going to sleep because I'm just going to toss and turn for an hour. Um, now, since being on the C60 Evo formula, uh, I go to sleep and my mind is going fast. Like I'm alert and ready to go, but my, my head hits the pillow and I'm out. And then I may wake up to use the restroom in the middle of the night. Again, my mind's like it's cr crisp. It's ready to go. Use the restroom. I get back in bed and I'm back to sleep. Uh, I don't know if that's been your experience. Yeah, I, I would say on the other side of that, for me, it's been more the waking up experience. That first hour of the day for me is what, again, you know, because I live somewhat in dream time, I bring back from my dreams important things. I process in sleep. Yeah. So I have noticed, first off, I've had incredible synchronicities hitting. Some of the research I'm doing right now, going into um, even DNA, human evolution, are subjects that I'm not really qualified for on a, on a scientific level. But what I'm finding is the synchronicities are hitting. The data comes from here and it comes from there. And I wake up some mornings and I, I am able to very quickly put together a, a package out of what appear to be random thoughts. Now, that's a thought process that goes on in my subconscious that then comes forward. But the stream of that is that I'm becoming more productive in research and writing time, which is that early morning period, because after that, my days kind of dissolves out into the things I have to do to function in my job and in my day to day life. So I'm bringing back from my sleep, some very productive concepts, synchronicities, and things that I'm able to integrate into the writing that I'm doing in the background to produce new shows. So yeah, it's important stuff. I am yeah. finding those same synchronicities happening where eight, nine, 10 in the morning, it's like, oh God, that dream. And then you go and make it yeah, happen. Exactly. I've been having yeah. a lot of that in the last yeah. week too. So. Yeah, I think that's normal for people in the field that we're in, Patty, because we, we deal with okay, the woo-woo stuff, but you know, what we're talking about on one level with the ESS 60 is a scientific product, but it's, it's a scientific product that's really come to us out of the quana. I mean, nobody was looking for this when those experiments yielded this product. This, yep. this product was visited to us. This was gifted to humanity at this time. And I'll stick by that statement. I, you, you mentioned, so I don't know if you know this, that, that the buckyball is the largest molecule that exhibit, exhibits quantum behavior. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. This so is a gift those, to humanity. So all those years before we were taking it in our mouth, Chris, what were, you, what were your 
uh, reasons to be making C60 in the 90s, other than oh. won the award and you knew that there was miracles waiting. Yeah, well, so, I, I mean, our joke, you mentioned the award, our joke at the time, you know, I'd tell my friends and family what I do, you know, nobody knows what I do, really. I, th I think when I say supplements now, they understand, but when I talked about carbon nanomaterials, and they're like, well, what's that good for? And the running joke was, well, it's really good for funding. If you're a researcher and you want to write a proposal, exactly. uh, you're going to get funded because you're writing it about, and I think it was in 1990, I think it was 1991, there's a service that keeps track of the most referenced papers, right? So in research, in, in, in the research literature, all 10 of the most referenced papers in 1991 were about fullerenes. Right. So it was in, like this is right in just before the Nobel Prize was issued. Everybody was incredibly excited about it. Uh, the buckyball is harder than a diamond. It turns into, into a diamond. It's got six fold symmetry. So you can pile on a whole lot of electrons and then take those electrons off uh, without degrading the material. By the way, there may be a Bucky battery at some point. Uh, again, this is the C60 industrial application. Mm -hmm. There may be this C60 battery because lithium, we all know we get our cell phone in. We're all happy on day one. And then we just watch that. That yeah, that lithium ion battery, battery like. do its decay. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, that's, that's because physical um, changes in the lithium batteries that cause it to no longer function as well. Well, C60 has the opportunity to not have that degradation. So it's got this amazing symmetry. It, it, like, I, I'm going to geek out a little bit here. Uh, there's a new symbol in chemistry because of the buckyball. Uh, C60 at lanthanum or lanthanum at C60 means lanthanum, one lanthanum atom physically trapped inside the C60 cage. Again, that looks like a soccer ball. So it's not ionically bonded. It's not covalently bond bonded. It's just physically trapped. So, so Patty, in the early days, they thought, hey, there's a trap. It's like benzene, so we can attach stuff to the exterior of it, and things that we could attach would be like, hey, let's put this arm that only attaches to cancer cells, and then inside oh. of it, we could trap a radioactive al atom. And if we did this, then now we've got like this perfect um, radiation therapy uh, molecule, right? Because it's just one molecule. Uh, th that was theorized like in the in the very early days, and 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 right in the in the nineties was that when the AIDS epidemic really kind of came out and peaked. Mm -hmm. If you put C60 in a Petri dish with the AIDS virus, it'll actually sit in one of the proteins uh, that is needed for reproduction. So it'll actually stop the reproduction of the AIDS virus. Wow. Wow. It's too bad we didn't find this 10 years earlier. It could have saved a lot of lives. Yeah. Um, but it's here now. And I think you, you could argue that we manifested this or that it was gifted to humanity, but you know, we're not just talking about supplements or products here. We're talking about uh, something that I think is going to be a major uh, element in rebooting humanity on, on, a, on a whole lot of different levels. Guys, this hour went really fast. It it's over? Does. What? what? Is that, is that the ESS-60 warping time? <laughs> it is. It is. We, we, just, we just went through a time bubble there. Wow. Uh, amazing stuff. Anything else we want to talk about before we, we, we end the show? Well, I think the thing that I have found most interesting is that what I needed to heal, I've been healing. And I've seen the physical evidence. Yeah. So I've seen things leave my body that I was like, where did that come from and how did that get in me? I've seen so much leave my body that I feel like for me, it's been a rotor rooter. It's been like and everything that wasn't supposed to be left. But I'm hearing things about people's eyes improving, people's mm -hmm. digestion improving, people's joints improving. I mean, it's, it's almost like you get what you need and we don't get the same because we don't have the same needs. Exactly. And a lot of people that buy the product and they say, um, I don't feel anything. I don't want to be insulting, but a lot of people don't feel, period. They just don't recognize don't. the feeling, yeah. Don't take the time to sense what they're feeling in their body. And, uh, you know, when you do, it's like kind of shocking because, oh my God, that is gone, you know, is what I'm hearing more than not. People realizing that something has changed and they didn't notice it until they went to use it. But and even the retrospective, if when we were talking about the sleep thing, until we actually began to, you know, look at it a little bit and introspect, we didn't really think about how we were interacting with the product. But 
looking back on it now, you know, we're, we're, we're a society that's based on, on very fast results, everything. That's what, that's what pharmaceutical industry is built on. Your, yeah. your pharma industry is basically designed to give you immediate results. Whereas it, I deal a lot with homeopathic and naturopathic remedies, which I know are a longer arc and also involve an interaction with the elements that you're dealing with on a conscious level. And I think when we talk about this product, we need to understand we're interacting with a quantum substance and we need to begin to interact with it in that way. Our intentions, our words, our vibrations also set the tone for how this product is going to reward us. It does indeed. I uh, want to absolutely. mention that it is an expensive product that in the 90s, C60 was more valuable than gold. $6,000 a gram. And gold was how much a gram? I think it has an appeal. Uh, well, I remember it, 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 it hit 825 at one point. Yeah. So yeah. average over the last decade. But we uh, encourage people to, if they want to try it, to sign up for a subscription and we give you 20% off. Cool. So your first, second, third, 20th order, they're all 20% off. And if you don't love it and you do think about your body and pick up, you know, oh my God, I do feel something, you know, think about it before you give up. But people can cancel without any, anything, just an email. But 20% uh, off is a nice discount. You also have an additional discount, Randy, which is RM1SPEC, Randy Morgan one special, because he is. Um, if you want to get a, a little further discount, you can use Randy's code. And if you decide to do a subscription, you don't have to think about it. You sign up once, we send it monthly until you change your mind and you save money. Uh, we also do cases, which sold one today, 12 bottles, it's 25% off. So we're trying to make it easier for people to, you know, buy more, pay less, um, but also just get at least to try it because it's so good. We don't have little samplers. We have um, four ounce bottles to begin, $95, but with the discounts, it makes it easier and it does make a difference. It took me 30 minutes the first time I took a spoonful. Actually not the first time I had had some the year before from somebody else and I wasn't impressed at all. And again, it might be where it's made, who's mixing it, how they're doing it, and how much C60 is in the mix. I buy from Chris and now I work with Chris and Robert because they're doing it right. They're giving you what the bottle says and they're also telling all of us 0.8, if you want really strong C60, take it in olive oil and you're going to get the most bang for your buck. So um, if, if you're interested in checking it out, you can partake of this. Uh, we put a link in the box down below the video there. You can just take that, grab it, use the code that's beside that to get the, uh, the, the discount on your, on your first purchase and uh, check it out. So that's going to wrap it up. Thanks, guys, for coming on. Chris, Patty, it's great always to talk to you. We'll do it again next month. Thank, thank you for it? having us. Absolutely. Off Planet Radio is signing off. The truth's out there. It's inside you. Go build a quantum machine. See you the next time. Don't, 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 don't,